Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. I promised to let you know about this and this is it. We know Grandalius is doing very well, but how are the women doing? In fact, they're doing very well given the circumstances. I draw your attention to the Muzichuks, both of them. Up to this stage of the tournament, they're both undefeated. Given they have played against Elyanov, Sarek, and Levon Aronian, this tells you something about how hard these girls make it for anyone who plays with them. Okay, enough with this before I upset some of my viewers. So, this is what I want to do for today. The game between Muzichuk and Mokumian, a player who outranks her by, by 120 low points. So, let's see how Maria does. And how hard it is to even take her on when she has the white pieces. Okay, and before I forget, let's get those details of the game and who has what. Maria got started with an info opening. And again, and why not, another Sicilian on the board. Now allow me to skip because it's all book standard. Knight f3, knight c6, d4, takes takes knight of six knight c3 e5 something many go for and now another knight b5 which is answered by this response and here we have the bishop pinning this knight to the queen from g5 and this is exactly the same game as we saw earlier the knight here was attacked after his retreat, b5, and this is nothing new. We saw in our Wesley game, our Wesley show game, against Grandalius, how standard this b5 is. But let's see where this game deviates. And it is here where it does. Wesley then, in his previous game, went for a knight move to d5. But here Maria takes this bishop, and when the capture was taken in this way, Knight d5, and we do have nearly the same moves as our earlier game, but with minor exceptions, which makes all the difference in how the game develops. Bishop g7, bishop d3, and knight back to e7 to try and get this knight off. Do you take or do you leave? You take, and through this capture, Maria went for short, and of course, Melkumian does the same. Here Maria went for the most attractive option and pushed on with this guy. And rather than take here, this is how black goes about it. F5, and doesn't really care what goes on on the queen side. And look at this move by Maria, queen F3. And she's eyeballing this rook in the corner. But even if you take F5, when the bishop captures, the corner rook is covered, so... There is not much going on. In fact, Melkumian did come up with what seems to be the best response in this position. And this is what he did. The question here is what is better to do? Do, do you win a pawn and give yourself a double pawn on the F file? Or do you go for something else? Three and a half minutes later, we get to see what happens. Maria took, and when the queen came off, after takes, what do you think Melkumian does? This is what he did, which is an excellent response. But can you figure this one out? When the bishop took, Melkumian said, you know what, I'm going to throw this guy in two, just to be able to rip open the center. And when this guy is also arrested, you might think white is much better due to the pawn surplus. The great pawn surplus he has. But is this a situation and why might this not be the case? But first things first, this corner rook does need to move. And this might be a required move before you go for anything else. Is anything wrong with rook b8? No, no, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this one. And yet Melkumian has a completely different idea. What he did was very confusing or confusing to me. I'm sure if he allows the rook to fall, this game will be more or less a one-way contest. 
And even here, having taken only just under one and a half minutes, this is what Melkomian did. Bishop takes f5 and allows his rook to fall. And this is how the game unfolded. The rook went just like that. So why on earth let this situation unfold? And this tells you how good Melkomian is in fact. You don't get to his elo by chance or luck. After this rook move, which doesn't look like much, can you see what is coming? Well, it's going to be very unwise if you miss this special attack, which guarantees the rook, and yet Melkomian seizes and yet ignores. And this young Armenian is very talented. What does he do? He probably overassessed the situation. And this is what he does. He took this guy, wanting the knight on a3, but he gambled wrongly because he missed out this rook move, which not only saves the knight, but also allows his rook on f1 to escape too. And this might hurt big time. After b4, we attacking this knight. This knight returned to base. And when Melkumian came up with this move, we do have an excellent game unfolding. In fact, this game has unfolded six or seven moves earlier. So what is the score so far? Five white pawns v four black ones. White has the rock pair and the knight v the bishop pair. If you do the math, it looks white is much better. But it's all about the strength of these two brothers on b2 and f5. Knight d2 and a4 led to this pawn push. And this is what this move did. Bishop d4. And something was going to come flying off. After rook e7, which is again an excellent answer, led to this bishop move to try and lock in the rook. But when this guy also pushed on, I'm not sure where this guy wants to go. Of course, there is one way, and this way is forward. We know what Chuck Norris can do with his own pawns, but if only Mozichuk was Chuck Norris. Rook c8 and rook b7, and he's game on. After this bishop move, which was not necessary because take on b4, this runs into this, and this will not work for white. This is such a robust game because it can swing either way. And also the element of risk may also need to be addressed. Both Muzuchuk and Mokumian are great risk takers. Without the element of risk, this game would not have been possible. After this pawn push, I think it was going to be game over because when the knight was removed, look at what we have. And yet, this is the guy that matters the most. This guy here on c7. So how does white break through here? And you don't even need to think this one over. Using your instincts, after this rook attack, the answer is staring you right in the face. There are all sorts of moves here, but I don't think anything works. This bishop responds to g5 to protect, may do something, but one thing it doesn't do is to protect what comes. Rook b8 and king g7, when the rook is removed, after bishop takes and rook d8, this will be it. Even when the bishop tries to make a run for it, there is c8 queen, and when the bishop comes off, there is no way black can win this one. So coming back, it's all about how you play the end game. Mokumian came up with this bishop move, but after rook d8, nothing changes. King g7 takes, takes, and now rook b8. We are reaching the same outcome as before, and this is how things had gone. Bishop fourth to h3, c8 queen, bishop takes, and rook takes, led to this king move. But is there a way to save this game? Once the rook stopped the king from advancing further, both knew how this was going to end. a3, king f1, and king e6, trying to get as close to the rook, led to this king to advance. And when the rook was attacked, this is what Muzichuk did. And when the king advanced even further, king d3. After the bishop came in to attack this guy on f2, we saw this rook respond. 
making sure if F2 is removed, B4 would also come off. When the bishop returned to C3, trying to hold the position, the king here made a step back to be able to deal with the invasion on the queen side. And now the end was closing in. F5 going after the rook led to this move and against any response, this guy on h7 is going to depart. Bishop back to e5 and not even rook takes but this move. And of course, and being hopeless, McCormian threw in the towel and resigned. And when again, this was by both, in fact. There had been some tremendous moves throughout this game. And you know, I have never covered a Melkoumian game before, but I got to tell you, he's one heck of a player. In fact, I did cover Melkoumian game against Ivanchuk, but that's a long time ago. Um, why was this game so interesting? Because... Both players took enormous risks. And when you take risks, these chess games get extremely spicy. And the thing is, we didn't even have one person taking huge risks today, but two of them. And what a great game this was by Maria Muzichuk. And no wonder even those with a much higher elo can't beat her. And this also includes Levon, who had a problem finding his way to victory when they met in round two. And this game too was another crazy Sicilian opening. Okay, this is what we have. And I've bypassed round seven to cover this very important and exciting game. But of course, I will return to cover another smashing game sooner or later. So until then, this was your chess puzzler.